It's easy to assume that every dog you encounter will be friendly and eager for a pat. You might even think that they're the bestest doggo in the world, ready for a nose boop at a moment's notice. But not all dogs are always friendly. <laughs> even if their breed is known to be. From wolf dog hybrids to tiny dachshunds, here are 20 of the most dangerous dogs in the world. Number 20. American Pit Bull Terrier American Pit Bull Terriers are confident, strong, enthusiastic dogs with a zest for life. They can be born in various colors and patterns and have been trained as sports dogs, working dogs, companion dogs, police dogs, and even therapy dogs. But this dog is 100 times more dangerous than a wolf. And here's why. Their looks, strength, and confidence have made them a pretty popular dog in the United States. And often, the wrong people end up owning them, training them poorly, and setting them up to become vicious. The fact that they naturally have so much strength and confidence can mean that these beautiful dogs aren't able to learn how to be a much-loved family pet when placed into the wrong homes. Instead, some owners hone in on their natural level of dog aggression and make them dangerous to be around anyone but their owners. A 2000 study by the CD CDC looking at dog bite related fatalities summarized dog breeds in fatal human attacks over 20 years. This study determined that out of all deaths between 1979 and 1998 where the dog breed was known, Rottweilers and Pitbull type dogs accounted for nearly 70% of them. However, even as many cities and countries impose restrictions on their ownership, other dog breeds are taken over the statistics instead. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Labrador. You might see a Rottweiler or Pitbull and think, well, this dog is statistically going to be more likely to bite me than any other breed. But you might be wrong. Can you believe the ever-popular family dog, the Labrador, is responsible for the highest number of personal injury claims? According to studies performed as recently as 2016 by pet insurance companies, Labradors were at the top of the pile, and delivery drivers and mail carriers made a third of all claims. It seems even our pets are tired of our never-ending Amazon orders. According to Royal Mail Research, there were about 2,600 attacks in a single year, and about a third happened in the front garden of a property and another third at the front door. Over half of these attacks were due to dogs not being kept securely, and over a third were through letterboxes. And these aren't just small nips, either. Many injuries, even from Labradors, resulted in horrific injuries like finger amputation, puncture wounds, lacerations, scarring, nerve damage, and fingernail loss. Many things can contribute to Labrador's behavior, such as their genes, training, protective instinct, experiences, environment, and even whether or not they're in pain. Even if you think your Labrador wouldn't hurt a fly, there's every reason to believe they might just have a bone to pick with your delivery driver. Number 18. Cocker Spaniel Cocker Spaniels look like the last breed of dog to be more dangerous than a wolf, but you might be surprised at just how aggressive they can be. In fact, one study pointed to this cute, floppy-eared dog as being one of the most aggressive dogs in the world. How's that for shocking? The Spanish study determined that English Cocker Spaniels are known to be more hostile than many other breeds, and their aggressiveness can be inherited. This means that even if you train your dog to the best of your ability, there's no guaranteeing that your sweet Spaniel will be the well-rounded, loving pet you expected. Out of 1,040 cases of dog aggression at a teaching hospital, the majority of them involved English Cocker Spaniels, Boxers, Rottweilers, Yorkshire Terriers, and German Shepherds. Delving into that data further, it was also found that English Cocker Spaniels were more likely than other breeds to act aggressively to strangers and even their owners. Males and Golden Cocker Spaniels were considered to be among the most hostile compared to mixed color coat Spaniels and black Spaniels. According to experts, the coat color relates to the pigment melanin, which shares a pathway with dopamine and brain chemicals that play a part in aggressive behavior. Then there's inadequate handling by owners who don't have all the appropriate dog behavior information. About 40% of dominance aggression in dogs related to owners who lacked authority and undertook little or no obedience training. Number 17. Alaskan Malamute 
Alaskan Malamutes are large, powerful, confident, wolf-like dogs. They certainly are beautiful and can be excellent pets for experienced owners, but they can also be dangerous in some situations. They are not aggressive by nature, but like many other dogs, they can display aggressive behavior due to how they've been brought up or due to experiences in their lives. When raised right, they are friendly, sociable, and prefer the company of people to other dogs. However, if they have ever needed to protect themselves from the people in their lives, they can become aggressive, scared, and protective. This is quite often seen in Alaskan Malamutes surrender to rescue shelters by people who really shouldn't be owners. And they are not inherently dangerous towards people, as in you wouldn't adopt or buy one to be a guard dog. Even though they are large, intimidating, and have that popular wolf-like appearance, they are unlikely to attack strangers. Their loud woos are also a dead giveaway that they aren't likely to attack you if you walk through their front gate. It's also worth noting that they have a high prey drive. They have a natural instinct to chase small animals and potentially harm them, which means adult Malamutes can rarely be introduced into a home already containing small pets like cats. Number 16. St. Bernard St. Bernards are often considered to be the gentle giants of the dog world. We read about them in children's storybooks, saving the lives of people lost in the mountains, and you rarely hear anything negative about them. But while St. Bernards are loving, protective, and intelligent family pets, they can also be territorial and aggressive. Like most dogs, this behavior can be avoided if they are trained and socialized from a young age. And it's crucial that you do this, since they can grow up to be around 260 pounds and can be hard to overpower if you need to stop them from doing something they shouldn't by force. You might think St. Bernards aren't capable of being mean or aggressive, and it's rare that they are, but they can be. According to studies, there have been seven deaths from St. Bernard attacks in a 20-year period, but that number might be higher since other attacks can go unreported. In 2016, a woman was walking to a bus stop in Canada when a St. Bernard on a leash came up to her and attacked her. She lost a significant amount of blood and required 40 stitches. The dog also broke her kneecap. The size and strength of these dogs means that even a minor attack can cause a great deal of damage to a person or another animal. Number 15. Great Dane Great Danes are among the tallest dogs in the world, and they were first bred for hunting deer and wild boar. Their size and strength makes them ideal for experienced owners, but they can also be excellent family dogs in households with children. In saying that, training is the key to having a well-rounded, safe Great Dane as a pet. Failure to train a Great Dane can result in them being dangerous, and given their size, you might not be able to control them when they do become dangerous. In a 20-year period from 1978, Great Danes were involved in the deaths of seven people, so even though attacks are rare, they aren't unheard of. Many things can contribute to having a dangerous Great Dane as a pet, such as a lack of training and socialization, mistreatment, pain and discomfort, and a weak owner. This combination of factors can mean that a Great Dane is not safe to be around strangers, children, and other pets. However, if a Great Dane is socialized and trained from a young age and has a dominant owner, they can be affectionate, laid-back, and gentle dogs. Number 14. American Akita American Akita dogs are beautiful, loyal, and brave dogs of Japanese origin. They are known for their courage, exceptional hunting instinct, and also for their territorial personality. Given that male Akitas can also be large and strong, they require a firm owner who's experienced in challenging breeds. American Akitas aren't prone to human attacks, but that's not to say that they don't have all the inherent traits of a dog that could attack humans. Their scissor-shaped jaws are similar to those of pit bull dogs, which means they have a powerful bite and you can't open their jaws until they decide to release their grip. As a result, being bitten by an Akita can result in serious injuries. They're also incredibly brave and loyal dogs, which means they're willing to risk their own lives to defend their human family. The problem is that they might not always be able to distinguish between a genuine threat or no threat. They're also protective of their food and territory. Fortunately, even with their strength, bite force, territorial nature, and strong personality, American Akitas can be much loved pets. They just require excellent socialization and training, and males should be castrated for safety reasons. You can then enjoy a happy and playful dog that is more than happy to follow your family's routine. Number 13. Wolf-Dog Hybrid 
Wolf-dog hybrids are not people pets. They might have been brought into the spotlight by Game of Thrones, but as stunning as they look, they genuinely are not dogs that you can easily own. And we're not even exaggerating. The American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals has called for this hybrid breed to be eradicated. According to ASPCA Vice President Dr. Steve Zavatowski, a behavioral genetics expert quoted by Pet Place, the mixing of genetics can result in strange behavioral traits and distributions of genes. He said you could end up with unpredictable combinations. He went on to say that by hybridizing wolves with dogs, you retain the aggressive and predatory nature of the wolves, but their natural shyness isn't there, so they aren't afraid of people and can be socially aggressive with adults and predatory towards children. Many people who purchase wolf-dog hybrids can be lulled into a false sense of security by how dog-like they are as puppies. However, once the dog matures at around three years old, the hybrid can start trying to fight to be the pack leader. They can challenge their owners for dominance and require constant supervision to keep them in check. It's issues such as these that made Dr. Zavatowski say the ASPCA doesn't believe people should have them as pets and they shouldn't be bred. There are no benefits whatsoever and really only potential problems, he said. Number 12. Chow 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 Chows from northern China are delightful-looking dogs that would definitely stand out among the more popular breeds like Retrievers and Labradors. They are cute, fluffy, and have fur that you can't help but want to nestle your face into. But this breed also has a pretty bad reputation and is considered high-risk. They are classed as unacceptable in many states, and some owners even need to carry special insurance for them. And you might think that Chow Chows are no more dangerous than any other breed, but a combination of poor training and the wrong environment can undoubtedly make them that way. Between 1979 and 1998, nearly 240 attacks by this breed were recorded. 37 of those victims were children, and 40 attacks resulted in fatalities. There are many traits to be aware of if you're thinking about adopting or purchasing a Chow Chow. First off, they're pretty aloof, which means they aren't all that interested in anyone who isn't their owner. They're also independent, so they prefer to make their own decisions. Chow Chows are also loyal, so if you're an experienced dog owner who will put time and effort into training and social you can be rewarded with loyalty. But guess what? It'll just be loyal to you, and it's rarely extended to the rest of your family. Chow Chows are generally not suitable for homes with small animals like cats and dogs of the same sex. Number 11. Irish Wolfhound Irish wolfhounds have a long and rich history. They used to be used during wars to drag men from horses and chariots, and they've also been quite handy for hunting large game like elk, wolves, and boar. They're less of a working dog and more of a family pet these days, albeit a very large one since they stand at about 32 inches at the shoulder. Most Irish wolfhounds are described as gentle giants with sweet temperaments. They love being companions to people and make terrible guard dogs since they aren't suspicious of strangers or remote aggressive toward them. In saying that, this breed can be dangerous in the right circumstances, like most animals, I guess. They are known to show dominant or aggressive behavior toward other dogs, particularly those of the same sex. Some are also known to chase small animals, such as cats, which means you likely couldn't introduce an older Irish wolfhound into your home that already has small animals. They are also strong and fast. You have to be a dominant, experienced owner to enjoy a well-rounded wolfhound that you can trust. Number 10. Leonberger. When you start exploring your dog purchasing options, you might be surprised at how many pros and cons there can be associated with a breed of dog called Leonberger. They are large, rugged, athletic dogs with thick coats that can be quite polite and protective and enjoy outdoor activities like sled and cart pulling, swimming, and hiking. It's almost like they tick all the right boxes for an outdoor, adventure-loving family. Although, Leonbergers also come with a few warnings linked to them. They are large, exuberant, and destructive when you leave them alone, and aggressive or fearful toward strangers if you don't socialize them enough. <laughs> Leonbergers can even show aggression towards other animals, and they are strong-willed. This means they require a strong, confident owner. It's also important to note that temperament is hard to predict when purchasing a Leonberger puppy. You might be able to reduce the risks of a poor character by choosing a reputable breeder, but you generally don't know if you've inherited any temperament issues until they mature. Some Leonbergers are naturally shy, while others are naturally on edge. Some owners also experience dog aggression, so many breeders recommend not keeping two Leonbergers of the same sex. Number 9. Brazilian Mastiff 
If you've started looking for a dog to join your family, the Brazilian Mastiff, or Fila Brasileiro, is probably not one to put at the top of your list. While they suit some people, they are by no means a family dog that you don't have to train, or one that'll always happily lounge on your sofa all day chewing toys. These loyal, loving dogs require owners that will command respect and be the authority figure or alpha. Otherwise, they could be pretty dangerous pets to own. Brazilian Mastiffs are working dogs from Brazil, known for their exceptional tracking abilities, impulsive temperament, and aggressiveness. Many hunters purchase these dogs for hunting because they can track down prey and hold it for their owners rather than attacking it. These traits typically make them suitable as guard dogs as well. But their loyalty and protectiveness means that they can distrust strangers. They're generally not the type of dog you can walk in public and trust not to react when strangers come near you. There's always a chance that they can act aggressively if approached. Their territory nature also means that they are best suited to homes without other pets. Number 8. Rhodesian Ridgeback Rhodesian Ridgebacks are protective, brave, and loyal dogs bred in South Africa for lion hunting. They could confront lions, hold them, and give the hunters time to shoot them. They were also more than capable of taking on leopards, baboons, and other fierce animals. So you could just imagine how strong, fierce, and dedicated these dogs are. Today, they aren't used for these jobs. Instead, they are family pets. But are they really the best family pets? Well, they are for inexperienced pet owners, that's for sure. They are incredibly powerful dogs, and when that's combined with their independent and stubborn streak, you can have a recipe for disaster if you're not a confident owner. They also have a high prey drive, which means they'll chase after anything, even if you haven't given them instructions. So if you own one, being off-leash in public is definitely a no-no, and you'll need a pretty robust fence since they can climb, dig, and break through fencing if there's prey to chase. These energetic dogs are pretty pretty dedicated to their families, though. They love children and can be quite goofy and charming. It's not uncommon for them to be reserved with strangers who visit your home. Number 7. Bully Cutta I'll put it plainly, in the wrong hands, bully cutta dogs can be dangerous. They used to be used as fighting dogs before legislation made the sport illegal, and they are large, powerful, and stubborn dogs that'll make you think twice about opening a gate with one standing behind it. Bully cuttas originated in either India or Pakistan, and they haven't appeared in many other parts of the world. They are sometimes called the beast of the east, and they are often used to guard people, property, and flocks of sheep. These days, they are becoming more common as companion dogs rather than guard dogs dogs, but they're still not recommended for first-time or inexperienced owners. They need a confident owner who will put time and effort into socialization and training from a young age. If you do, you'll be rewarded with a loyal, tolerant, and kind dog that will love its place in your home. <laughs> However, it's important to note that not all bully cuttas will suit homes with other pets, even with socialization and training from a young age. Some can be aggressive to pets and other dogs, while others don't tend to get along with dogs of the same sex. It can be like a bit of a lottery with this dog. Number 6. Kuvaz the Kuvaz dog is one that you can almost immediately identify. They are typically found guarding people, stock, and property, and they are large, white dogs. This breed is challenging to train, protective of their owners, and highly suspicious of strangers. Kuvasak dogs are one of the oldest dog breeds in Hungary and definitely not for inexperienced owners. They are powerful, muscly, and strong dogs and can weigh up to 115 pounds. Their size and strength mean that training and socialization from a young age are crucial. As loyal, patient, and loving as Kuvasak dogs can be, they can also be dangerous. They've been bred to guard, which means they are always looking for danger signs. If they suspect a situation might be dangerous, they can quickly launch into action and move at incredible speeds. This breed is also known to become frustrated and even aggressive if chained, kenneled, or tethered. They crave freedom, which means they are by no means an apartment dog. If you were going to own such a dog, you'd need to live somewhere rural and be willing to put in hours and hours and hours of training just to ensure they were safe to be around. Number 5. English Mastiff 
English Mastiffs are quite common companion pets in family homes today, even if they are mainly still bred for guarding purposes. Their massive size and physical traits can be enough to scare off would-be burglars, even if you can train them to be gentle giants. English Mastiffs can grow up to about 30 inches and weigh as much as 230 pounds. They also have strong, muscular bodies and low body fat. Then you hear their deep bark and you just know that no one will attempt to mess with your property. Then there are their personality traits that might also warn people off. They can be reserved and suspicious with strangers until you, their owner, shows them that those strangers are okay. They are also incredibly protective of their owners and loyal, although they are slow learners, which means they can be hard to train. Compared to other species, their intelligence levels are generally quite low. But don't let them hear you say that. When trained and socialized, there's every reason to believe you'll have a friendly, lovable English Mastiff as a pet. But it's amazing what a lack of socialization and poor training can do. They can be dangerous and aggressive, and they rank number six on the list of dogs with the strongest bite. From 2005 to 2017, English Mastiffs were also involved in 14 fatal attacks on people, making up 3.2% of all deadly dog attacks in that period. Number 4. Czechoslovakian Volchuk if you haven't owned many dogs before, don't spend much time at home, have a small section, and have no experience with training, then the Czechoslovakian Volchuk is possibly one of the worst dogs you could own. Sure, these wolf and dog hybrids consisting of Carpathian Wolf and German Shepherd are cute and look very much like wolves, but they are courageous, tireless, suspicious, and aloof dogs that genuinely do take experienced and strong owners. As they are also independent and dominant, they will put all their energy into undoing your training rather than doing what you say. If given the opportunity, they will run for miles and miles and miles without tiring, and there's no chance of you forming a good relationship with your neighbors if you leave them on your property while you're away. They can quickly get bored and howl, bark, and cry for you when you're away. An active home with plenty to see, do, and experience is best for this breed, and you can expect to have to provide such a home for up to 16 years. While many large dog breeds don't live for a long time, this dog is an exception to the rule. Then there's the potential for aggression. Remember, these dogs have wild wolf in their DNA. They can be unpredictable and sometimes even dangerous. Between 1979 and 1998, they they were responsible for 14 deaths in the United States, and many experts don't recommend owning them if you have other pets or children. Number 3. Four Bull Nearly any dog has the potential for aggression, especially without adequate training and socialization, and the South African working dog Borbul is no exception to the rule. They are large, loyal, and stubborn dogs that weigh about 176 pounds and can be born with a wide range of temperaments. You stand the best chance of success with this dog if you socialize them from a young age and keep up with training. They also need a lot of exercise, even if they are generally quite lazy and calm. They naturally have a territorial nature and a strong prey drive, and it's not uncommon for them to fight to the death to protect their owners. Their natural instincts mean that keeping them on a leash in public can be crucial. They also thrive in having a job to do, such as weight pulling and agility. While training can be challenging, it can be important for this breed. They can show aggression toward other dogs, particularly those of the same sex, and they're not typically dogs that you can take to a dog park for playtime or even on a trail without a leash. It's uncommon to find this dog breed outside of South Africa, but there have been reports of a woman in the U.S. being killed in her own home by one of the five Borbles she owned. Reportedly, that dog would never let people enter her home. Number 2. Dachshund we can gain a false sense of security from small dogs. If they're tiny, then surely they're not aggressive. Well, that is not entirely accurate. Many small dog breeds can act more aggressively than dogs ten times their size, such as the Dachshund. Sure, you might not be viciously attacked by a Dachshund in the same way you might a larger aggressive dog, but that's not to say they aren't aggressive. Dachshunds are described as bossy dogs that aren't always ideal for first-time owners. They are challenging to potty train, are prone to separation anxiety, and have a high prey drive. If a cat or squirrel enters your property, you'll probably want to keep your dachshund locked up to avoid a bloodbath. <laughs> 
They are also persistent barkers, which means any slight noise or movement outside might see your dachshund run into the door or window, which can grate on your nerves if you're constantly home with your dog. Dachshunds are surprisingly scrappy, need a lot of exercise, and have high stamina. They might look like lap dogs, but they are anything but. Number 1. Staffordshire Bull Terrier Staffordshire Bull Terriers have been the victims of bad press for a number of years. Like many dogs, they can be trained by irresponsible owners to be aggressive, and they are commonly linked with bad owners and dog fights. So they can be dangerous dogs to own, but you have to work pretty hard to make them so. Otherwise, they can become beautiful family pets with appropriate training and socialization. Staffordshire Bull Terriers are one of the most recommended breeds for families with young children, and they're often referred to as nanny dogs. Unlike many other breeds that bond with individuals, Staffies bond with entire families. They also love to please, so they'll go to great lengths to do what their owners want, making them particularly easy to train. It also helps that they're intelligent and trustworthy. So while they can be dangerous and have attacked people, you can often blame that on the owners rather than the dogs. The reality is that many dog breeds have a history, and some circumstances in their lives might also see their natural instincts shine through a little stronger than other breeds. So even the friendliest breed can turn vicious in the right circumstances. Did any of these breeds shock you? Have you owned any of them? Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!